I'm Eric Gensler, and I'm here to talk to you about vascular malformations. This talk is directed at the non-interventionalist because a large number of these problems actually just need correct identification and diagnosis. It's the minority that need referral to a neurointerventionalist, although I want to talk about that as well. And thanks to my colleague, Chris Stoud at UCSF, who actually does that sort of work. I do have some conflicts, but none are pertinent to this particular talk. We're going to start with true vascular malformations. These are things that you are born with, as opposed to, say, a dural AV fistula, which is usually acquired or a traumatic AV fistula. And the heart of the talk is going to be on these four lesions shown here in yellow. True AVMs we see on CAT scans and classically were evaluated by angiography. You're born with these. It's an artery feeding a vein through a nidus of abnormal tissue. And as a diagnostic neuroradiologist, the important thing is to see these. And when you see a subtle uh, area like this of subarachnoid bleeding, it's easy to dismiss it as perhaps something from trauma or an aneurysm. But as we begin to work these up, particularly with CTA, uh, if you see a little vessel, as you saw right there in the fourth ventricle area, it's important to proceed uh, to investigate this because, in fact, uh, this was a small ABM. It's the type of ABM that can be now treated very successfully by neurointerventional techniques and could lead to a more catastrophic bleed if not identified correctly. So again, when you see these subtle bleeds, uh, the CTA is your friend and look for findings like this and it can make a big difference. The arteriovenous malformation is a nidus of abnormal tissue where there are shunts without a capillary bed and therefore you get early venous filling, very rare, perhaps one in a thousand. They're less common than aneurysms of the brain, and they come from the PIA, uh, internal carotid artery supply. People present with headaches, and of course, uh, the key angiographic features uh, we're aware of. And size uh, predicts hemorrhage risk, as does the presence of aneurysm and venous outflow restriction. These characters have been used by Spetzler and Martin to come up with a grading system for surgical risk. It's quite straightforward. You get points for size, one to three, as shown here. Eloquence means is it a part of the brain, such as the motor strip, uh, where it would be devastating to do surgery, or perhaps the right frontal lobe, as the case I just showed you, where surgery might be a better option. Deep uh, venous drainage is uh, more ominous than superficial venous drainage, and you can go between one and five. 